InstaSpin FOC Launchpad and Booster Pack Training Series, Part 4, Accelerations and Speed Reversals. Okay, now let's look at um, basically uh, how fast we can accelerate, how slow we can accelerate, and some of the performance. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back to zero. We'll start from a known spot. And since I'm going to be starting up the motor, I'm going to put force angle on. Um, this is going to allow me uh, to start up with a known angle, get the motor moving, and then fast is going to take over at 45 RPMs. This is the typical way that you're going to want to start up your motor. In the future, we'll give you some other ways to start this up. Um, and we have seen some customers already who may have hauls built into their system. They're using that to get the initial angle, and it's very easy to take that starting angle and seed that directly into fast and start up without force angle but with fast and be in full closed loop at the proper alignment. And we'll have some other techniques that we show uh, that allow you to do this on certain motors um, with a, a software based approach and no, sen no mechanical sensors at all. But for now let's see um, how fast we can, we can accelerate. So this is a 4000 RPM motor, it's no load, so let's see if we can go to 4000 RPMs. You can see I have the acceleration set really low, 200 RPMs per second. So obviously it's going to take a little bit of a uh, time to do that. But what if I wanted to accelerate much faster? Um, and you can hear the motor getting louder. Again, I have a zip tie tied to it, so it's going to be uh, quite loud, I'd say. What if we want to accelerate at the same rate as the, the top seat of the motor? So 4,000 RPMs per second. So it would take me a second to go to zero. But let's go ahead and go through zero. So this will take me two seconds. You can see the performance of the motor through zero. One thing I forgot to do is typically you want to turn force angle off during a test through zero and back through your range. This means that you don't want this angle to be forced ever. So we're just going to use the feedback from fast all the time, even as we go through this zero speed. So let's increase the acceleration rate. And again, go from positive to negative speed. So that would take one second to go from minus 4,000 to plus 4,000. Let's, let's keep increasing this. You can see it's performing quite well. And one thing you'll notice is I've actually attached my motor. I've stabilized it to the table. Um, if I didn't have it stabilized right now, it would actually be making a big racket because just the inertia even from a small zip tie creates a mechanical torque on the shaft and that's going to resonate through the entire motor. So I've just used simple double-sided tape and just that gives it enough attachment to the table where it's going to be stable. Now let's look at some slow speed reversals. So for this it's going to take longer so let's go to a slower speed to start with and let's try something like 150 RPMs plus or minus. So we're going to go through zero at 40 RPMs per second. So you can watch it slowly go through zero and watch the performance of the shaft at zero speed and restarting. And so this again is also going to be very motor dependent uh, based on the back EMF of the motor, how well it can track through zero. Um, and the slower you go, you know, the more. Um, potential you can have for your fast angle to drift. And so this is something you need to test yourself and look at do you need to use force angle or do you need to use another technique um, to keep the motor going. So if I go really slow, right, you're going to see some performance degradation as the, the motor gets into this space, you know, in between plus and minus one hertz where we saw it didn't perform well where it's, it's also going to lose its angle. And so I'm going to provide a little bit of load just to give it a little bit better signals into to fast. It's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. So you can see even without force angle it does move in the right direction. It does begin to start up again. Uh, but we, what you'll see is that uh, you may get more um, 
realignment near zero speed. You may get a bigger movement at a fast as the, the estimator becomes slightly contaminated and then it takes a big jump in the angle in the next, um, in the next control cycle. So one thing force angle can do is keep that angle uh, being iterative, keep moving it in the right amount for each control cycle to keep that angle uh, stable. So that's something you really have to look at for your system. Again, if you're doing faster accelerations, you're typically going to have force angle off. Um, fast will keep up. Um, but if your um, feedback into the system is, uh, isn't good and it, you keep getting not good data into the system for a continued amount of time, then you're going to get some drift in the air.